Welcome back to part six of our Comfy UI Masterclass series. Today you'll learn two powerful image editing techniques that will take your AI generation skills to the next level in painting and out painting. In painting is a technique that allows you to edit specific parts of a picture and transform them into something completely different. In painting is incredibly versatile. You can use it to remove unwanted objects like photo bombers or power lines from your photos, fix scratches in old photographs, or even add new elements like placing a hat on someone's head. Outpainting, on the other hand, is a technique that expands your image beyond its original boundaries by generating new content that seamlessly blends with what's already there. Unlike in-painting, which works within existing image areas, outpainting adds elements around the edges, creating a larger canvas while preserving the original composition. For our foundation in both techniques, we need to start with an image, which means that we need an image-to-image -image workflow. You should recognize this workflow from part five of our series. This is the same image to image setup we built earlier. If you're not familiar with it or need a refresher, take a quick look at part five, where I showed you how to transform reference images while maintaining key elements. We covered the important denoise setting and techniques for handling different image sizes, all essential knowledge for what we're about to explore next. While regular models like Juggernaut XL can be used for both in-painting and out-painting, I want to demonstrate something more effective. For truly impressive results, we'll use specialized models specifically trained for these tasks. In this tutorial, I'm using the Juggernaut XL in-painting model that I've already downloaded from Civit AI. If you're wondering how to add new models to your setup, remember the first part of this tutorial series where I showed you how to install and run Comfy UI in the cloud. Those same steps apply perfectly to your local machine as well. In this image to image workflow, I've used a new image of a young woman as our starting point. Our goal will be to change her hairstyle. First, I've loaded the checkpoint file containing my in-painting model. I've also adjusted the settings in the sampler node based on the model's recommendations. Now we need to modify this workflow. Let me double click on the canvas to open the node search and type in painting. There it is, the in paint model conditioning node. This node prepares images for Ksampler to fill the areas of the image we want to in paint. Watch how I connect this new node to our workflow. Look at the input and output colors for guidance. I'm connecting the positive output from our prompts to the positive input of the new node and similarly connecting the negative outputs. Next, let's link this node to our K-sampler, connecting the positive and negative outputs directly to the corresponding inputs of the K-sampler. Since our Juggernaut XL in painting model has VAE baked in as noted on its model page, I can connect the VAE output from the load checkpoint node directly to the VAE input of our in-paint model conditioning node. Finally, we need to connect the latent output of this new node to the latent image input of our case sampler. With this setup, we no longer need the VA encode node because our new node handles that encoding process. We also need to install custom nodes. A custom node in ConfUI is essentially a user-defined module that extends the platform's functionality beyond standard features. This is one of the great benefits of ConfUI being open source. Developers worldwide contribute valuable extensions in the form of custom nodes. Let me show you how to install these custom nodes. Navigate to the ConfUI Manager and click on Custom Nodes Manager. Type in paint crop in the search field to narrow down your options. Look for Comfy UI in paint crop and stitch. This is what we'll use. Select the latest version and click install. After installation, you'll need to restart Comfy UI and refresh your browser. Once you've restarted, you'll find these new nodes in your node library under the in paint folder. Notice that we've installed four separate nodes that we'll use throughout this tutorial. Now, let's add the first two specialized nodes we need, InPaint Crop and InPaint Stitch. 
The InPaint crop node prepares our image before it goes through the K-sampler by focusing specifically on the part we want to edit. The InPaint stitch node does the opposite. It takes our edited portion and seamlessly blends it back into the original image. Let's connect these to our workflow. I'm connecting the image output from the load image node directly to the image input of the InPaint crop node and the mask output to the mask input of the InPaint crop node. The cropped image output goes to the pixels input of our InPaint model conditioning node and the cropped mask output connects to its mask input. For the InPaint stitch node, I'll connect it after the VAE decode node, routing its image output to the image input of our save image node. We then need to connect the stitch output from the InPaint crop node with the stitch input of the InPaint stitch node, so it knows how to blend our edited portion. Don't worry if we miss something. When you run the workflow, ComfyUI will alert you to any missing connections. Now it's time to define exactly which parts of our image to change. Let me show you how to access the mask editor. Right-click on the Load Image node and select Open in Mask Editor. See this circle moving across the image? That's your brush tool. Over here on the right, you can customize its shape. Choose between round or square depending on what works best for your project. You can also adjust the thickness of your brush to control its size. Look how a larger setting lets you cover more area quickly while smaller values give you fine control for detailed work. Next, see how the opacity setting determines mask transparency. A higher opacity creates a solid mask, while lower values give semi-transparent areas, useful for smooth transitions. The hardness setting controls how crisp or soft your brush stroke edges appear. Notice the difference between high hardness with sharp defined edges versus lower hardness with softer, feathered edges that are perfect for smooth blending. The smoothing precision adjusts how your brush follows hand movements. Higher precision creates smoother curves, while lower precision gives slightly more jagged lines but allows for quicker adjustments. In the layer section you can see both the mask and image layers with toggle switches. Try turning them on and off to either focus on fine-tuning your mask or checking its alignment with the underlying image. Let's look at the top toolbar in our mask editor. Notice these arrow buttons. These are your undo and redo controls for stepping through recent changes. Next to those is the invert button that flips mask colors, turning black areas white and white areas black. Here's the clear button that removes all mask edits when pressed. The Save button is particularly important. It saves all current mask edits and exits the editor, applying changes directly to our workflow. And the Cancel button discards any changes made during this editing session. Now let me show you the tools on the left side. The top icon is the brush tool for drawing or painting the mask manually. Below that is the eraser tool that works similarly but removes parts of your existing mask perfect for refining edges. Now let's change our girl's hair using InPainting. Watch as I cover all her hair using the brush tool. Once I'm satisfied with my selection, I'll click Save to confirm our mask. Next, I'll tell ComfyUI what to create by typing purple hair into the positive prompt field. Let's run our workflow and see what happens. Look at the result. The girl's hair has been completely replaced with new hair. Notice how the haircut is somewhat different when we compare both images. The purple color looks quite faint, almost like white blonde rather than vibrant purple. Let me adjust our k-sampler parameters to get a better result. I'll increase the denoise value from 0.8 to 0.9 to give the AI more creative freedom. When we generate again, Notice how the color hasn't changed much, but the haircut is completely different. This is the interesting challenge within painting. There's going to be lots of trial and error to get exactly what you want. After a few experiments, I've managed to get this result. See how the purple hair looks a bit artificial? 
that's actually realistic. Bright purple hair often does look somewhat unnatural in real life. Using this same technique, you could make her hair curly, or by expanding your mask, you could even make it longer. In the same way we changed hair color, let me show you how versatile in painting can be. By drawing a mask on the original image and defining what you want in the prompt, you can add virtually anything. Glasses, accessories, you name it. Now let's add something completely new to an image. Look at this starting image of an empty room. Watch as I mask this portion of the floor and type a cozy red armchair in the prompt. Let's generate and see what happens. Interesting result. It added an armchair, but a white one instead of the red we specified. Despite the color mismatch, see how realistic it looks? The AI even added a subtle shadow underneath for depth. This is a perfect example of why in painting requires experimentation. Let's explore settings we can adjust for better results. I'll add a preview node after the in paint crop node so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. See what occurs when I generate an image. The in paint crop node crops out just the area around the masked portion and passes only that section to the case sampler. Then the in paint stitch node seamlessly blends everything back together. There are several parameters we can adjust in the in paint crop node. Watch what happens when I change the expand factor. When I set it to 2, notice how it crops out a significantly larger area of the image. Now we can see the fireplace that wasn't visible in the previous crop. This expanded view gives the case sampler more context about the surrounding environment, helping it make better decisions about the masked area. This often results in more coherent additions to your scene. You can also experiment with upscaling or downscaling the image, or adjusting the mask blur factor, which determines how much softening occurs around the edges of your newly generated content. If you're particularly happy with one of your outputs and want to use it as your new starting point, simply right-click on the output image, select Copy, then go to the Load Image node and paste it using Ctrl and V on Windows or Command plus V on Mac. Now that you understand in-painting, let me show you out-painting. This technique allows us to expand our image beyond its original boundaries, creating new content that seamlessly blends with what's already there. First, we need to add a specialized node. Watch as I search for out-paint and select Extend Image for out-painting, one of the custom nodes we installed earlier. It needs to sit between the Load Image node and the in-paint crop node. I'll add a preview node after our outpainting node to help visualize what's happening behind the scenes. This is optional but helpful for understanding the process. Look at this outpainting node. It lets you expand your original image in any direction. For this demonstration, I'll select Expand Up Factor and increase it by 50% to add additional space to the upper part of our image. When we run this, Observe what's happening. The Extend Image for Outpainting node has added an inverted copy of the image to the upper portion. The InPaint Crop node focuses on the specific part that the AI should generate. The case sampler removes the noise and generates a beautiful continuation of the sky for our original scene. Notice I didn't change my prompt from earlier. It still says Plant which explains the palm tree peeking out from the upper part of our expanded image. Even so, the outpainting has done a remarkable job of creating a natural extension. Let's try changing the prompt to rainbow. Look at that. Now we have a rainbow appearing in our expanded sky. The AI has also changed the sky color, adding its own artistic interpretation to our request. And that's a wrap on in-painting and out-painting. You've now mastered two powerful techniques that will dramatically expand your creative possibilities. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.